One at a lover's lane near a lake just north of San Francisco. Three others in nearby Vallejo. The latest, a taxi driver in San Francisco. What are the odds that Gary Stewart thinks his father was a Zodiac killer and they've got the same handwriting, the same scar, and they're in the same places? He doesn't get great excitement over it. He, he just uh, he thinks killing is, is just killing. In the late 1960s and early 70s, Northern California became the hunting ground of a terrifying and elusive killer known only by the pseudonym The Zodiac. This shadowy figure murdered his victims in cold blood, taunting police and the media with cryptic letters and ciphers that hinted at future killings. While other killers eventually faced justice, the Zodiac slipped through the grasp of law enforcement, becoming one of the most infamous unsolved cases in American history. His symbol, a circle with a crosshair, became a chilling signature, marking not just his correspondence, but embedding itself in public memory. Over time, the Zodiac evolved from a killer into a modern-day enigma, whose case has inspired a legion of amateur detectives, documentaries, books, and movies. The Zodiac claimed to have killed 37 people, though only five deaths and two injuries were officially linked to him. Despite years of investigation, arrests, and technological advancements, his identity has never been confirmed. Decades later, the question still lingers, who was the Zodiac? On December 20th, 1968, at Lake Herman Road in Benicia, California, the Zodiac Killer committed his first confirmed murders. David Faraday, 17, and Betty Lou Jensen, 16, were enjoying their first date. They parked along a quiet road, a popular spot for couples. Under the cover of darkness, an unknown figure approached their vehicle and shot both teenagers in cold blood. David was shot in the head, and Betty Lou was shot multiple times in the back as she tried to flee. Their lifeless bodies were discovered shortly after by a passing motorist, marking the beginning of the Zodiac's reign of terror. Six months later, on the night of July 4, 1969, the Zodiac struck again. Darlene Farron, 22, and Michael Majo, 19, were sitting in Farron's car at Blue Rock Springs Park, just four miles from the site of the previous murders. As the couple relaxed in the parked vehicle, a second car pulled up behind them. A man exited the vehicle, approached the driver's side with a flashlight, and opened fire without warning. Darlene was fatally shot, but Michael miraculously survived despite multiple gunshot wounds. Majot's harrowing account provided crucial insight into the killer. A stocky white man in his late 20s to early 30s with short brown hair and glasses. This description gave law enforcement their first tangible lead on the mysterious assailant. However, identifying the suspect proved far more difficult than anyone anticipated. Just weeks after the attacks at Blue Rock Springs Park, on August 1, 1969, three local newspapers, the San Francisco Chronicle, the San Francisco Examiner, and the Vallejo Times Herald, received nearly identical handwritten letters. Each letter contained chilling details of the murders that only the killer could know, along with a piece of a coded message, a cipher, that the Zodiac claimed held his identity. The letters demanded that the newspapers publish the ciphers on the front page. If they refused, the Zodiac threatened to embark on a killing spree over the weekend. At the bottom of each letter, the killer signed off with his now infamous circle with a crosshair symbol. His tone was unsettlingly playful and taunting. I like killing people because it is so much fun. One of the most famous ciphers, known as Z340, remained unsolved for over five decades. It wasn't until 2020 that a team of amateur codebreakers cracked it, revealing a chilling message. However, even after all this time, the code did not reveal the Zodiac's name. The decoded message read, I hope you are having lots of fun trying to catch me. I am not afraid of the gas chamber. The media frenzy surrounding these letters turned the Zodiac into a terrifying figure in the public's mind. The mysterious killer used the newspapers to toy with the authorities, leaving them powerless to stop him. On September 27, 1969, 
College students Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard were enjoying a peaceful day by Lake Berryessa, but their serene outing took a dark turn when a strange man emerged from the woods. He wore a black executioner-style hood and a bib with the zodiac's crosshair symbol emblazoned on the front. He forced them to lie on their stomachs and bound them with pre-cut lengths of rope. Then, in a horrifying twist, the man stabbed both victims repeatedly. Brian survived the ordeal, but Cecilia succumbed to her injuries two days later. Hours later, the Zodiac called the Napa County Sheriff's Department from a payphone, calmly reporting the double stabbing and taking full credit for the crime. Napa Police Department. I want to report a murder. No. A double murder. They are two miles north of Park Headquarters. They were in a white Volkswagen Carmen Gia. The Lake Berryessa attack stands out not only for its brutality, but also for the theatrical costume the killer wore. On the night of October 11, 1969, the Zodiac killer shifted his hunting grounds to the heart of San Francisco. He hailed a cab driven by Paul Stein, a 29-year-old taxi driver, and requested a ride to a neighborhood near Presidio Heights. However, instead of reaching his destination, the passenger shot Stein in the head at point-blank range and removed a piece of his bloodied shirt as a grim keepsake. The murder shocked the city, not only for its brutality, but because it marked a departure from the Zodiac's previous pattern of targeting couples in secluded areas. Days later, the San Francisco Chronicle received another letter from the Zodiac, this time containing a piece of Paul Stein's bloody shirt. In this letter, the Zodiac threatened to escalate his violence by targeting school buses, suggesting he could shoot out the tires and kill the children as they exited. This threat sent waves of panic through the Bay Area and prompted heightened security measures for school transportation. Now, every day, police cars follow the buses which would be likely targets. Officers armed with shotguns take the threat seriously. The psychotic killer has already murdered five. As the Zodiac's reign of terror continued, the police narrowed down a list of suspects. Although multiple individuals became persons of interest over the years, none were conclusively linked to the murders. Here are the key suspects. Arthur Lee Allen. Allen was the primary suspect in the Zodiac investigation, heavily featured in books and documentaries. He was first investigated in 1969 and again in 1971 when an acquaintance told police that Allen had spoken about killing people and attaching a flashlight to a gun, a tactic used in the Blue Rock Springs shooting. Allen matched some circumstantial evidence. He wore a Zodiac-branded watch, had firearms similar to those used in the attacks, and was known to be ambidextrous possibly explaining discrepancies in the Zodiac's handwriting. However, his fingerprints, DNA, and handwriting did not match any found at the crime scenes or on the Zodiac's letters. Despite the compelling evidence, the case against Allen fell apart, and he died of a heart attack in 1992, leaving the mystery unsolved. Ross Sullivan Sullivan became a suspect due to his possible connection to the 1966 murder of Sherry Jo Bates. Bates's murder in Riverside, California bore similarities to the Zodiac's crimes, and Sullivan had disappeared for several days after her death. His behavior raised alarms, with colleagues describing him as unsettling. Additionally, Sullivan wore military-style boots, which matched the footprints found at the Lake Berryessa attack. However, no hard evidence ever linked him definitively to the Zodiac Murders Crime Museum. Earl Van Best Jr. In 2014, Gary Stewart published a book titled The Most Dangerous Animal of All, accusing his biological father, Earl Van Best Jr., of being the Zodiac. Stewart argued that his father's appearance resembled the police sketch, and his knowledge of cryptography suggested a possible connection to the Zodiac's ciphers. However, forensic analysis ruled out Van Bess through DNA and handwriting comparisons. Despite decades of investigation and numerous promising leads, none of these suspects could be definitively linked to the Zodiac. The lack of concrete evidence combined with the Zodiac's ability to disappear without leaving a trace, ensured the case remained open, leaving both investigators and the public without closure.
over the years, the Zodiac's letters, unsolved ciphers, and cryptic persona have inspired both professional and amateur sleuths to keep investigating, hoping to uncover his identity. The case's enduring mystery has made the Zodiac a mythic figure in American crime history. Investigators and journalists, such as Robert Graysmith, whose book served as the basis for the film Zodiac 2007, have devoted years to unraveling the killer's secrets. Despite this, the Zodiac continues to elude justice, maintaining its grip on the public imagination. Despite the passage of over 50 years, the Zodiac Killer's identity remains one of the most notorious unsolved mysteries in criminal history. Advances in forensic technology, such as DNA profiling, handwriting analysis, and artificial intelligence, have sparked new hope for solving the case, but so far, the Zodiac has continued to elude justice. One of the most significant developments came in 2002, when investigators developed a partial DNA profile from saliva found on the stamps and envelopes of the Zodiac's letters. Unfortunately, the DNA did not match any known suspects, including Arthur Lee Allen, the most prominent person of interest at the time. Even in recent years, the Zodiac's ability to evade capture and his continued impact on pop culture has ensured that his story lives on. From podcasts and documentaries to online communities of amateur detectives, new generations remain captivated by the Zodiac's mystery hoping that one day, the final piece of the puzzle will fall into place. As forensic technology improves, there is still hope that the Zodiac's identity will be revealed. Until that day comes, the Zodiac will remain a ghost in the annals of true crime, a killer whose name has become synonymous with terror, mystery, and obsession.